Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair cigars. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our debonair ideal segment for this evening where we will talk about how to get the new cigar smoker into cigar smoking. Now, we've talked before about cigars that you would give new cigar smokers, but I, I like Dave's description of, you know, there's someone new in the cigar shop, someone who's new to cigars or people who have never smoked a cigar before that want to try a cigar. Like, what are the things that you tell them about cigars and how do you get them kind of indoctrinated into cigar smoking? And it's interesting, uh, Jorge from Tobacconist University was just on in a previous segment and talked about um, some of that as well. And I, I really liked his thoughts and sentiments on that particular topic. And uh, since you mentioned that, Dave, I've got a lot of thoughts and ideas in my head, but I want to I want to hear from you first. Well, it's just interesting because I've been talking to uh, well, I taught Steve Saka today mm -hmm. for an interview. And I also in the past talked to um, Eric Master Sensei at Dojo. Mm -hmm. And it's like what and, 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 they, and they keep bringing up the idea that what got them into cigars is the community aspect. And. I think for a lot of people that go into shops that are new, they can find it intimidating because they don't really know yet. And there's lots of cigars and they don't know. And I guess for me, it's just being inclusive and bringing those people in and maybe, you know, like what Jorge was saying, you know, just go through with them, smoke the same cigar, talk about it, you know, show them around and really be, really be inviting and not, you know, and really, you know, helping them kind of along the way. You know, Dave, you bring up an interesting point uh, about being debonair, and, and that's smoking the same cigar with the person. And, and that really, it speaks volumes to letting people into the industry, into this great hobby, where you have someone that comes to your house, or you meet someone at a shop, and they're like, what do I want to smoke? And if you tell them, well... I think we should smoke this. And you smoke the same cigar with them and you compare notes. I think that's a great strategy. That's a great strategy. And I, I, I've done that. And I've been in the opposite position where I hadn't smoked as many cigars as I have sitting here today. And I walk into Mr. J's I'm on a smoke shop, you know, years ago. And you start smoking some of the same cigars that Paul Joyle and, and Mark Feely, Stogie Santa, are, sm are smoking. And it's really an inviting thing to sit down with them and all smoke the same cigar. And here you are kind of like, you know, this rook. I mean, they smoked thousands more cigars than you have and really developed their palate. And here you are all smoking the same cigar. That's a great learning opportunity. And it's a great way to, as a gateway into getting people more into cigars. So I, I agree with you 100% on that. Yeah, I mean, um, especially now because we're kind of, gearing up towards Christmas and people might be going in a shop to get something for someone when their friends that smoke cigars, maybe they're walking around the shop and like, Oh, there's something I might be interested in. Just, you know, sort of taking them around and, and sharing a cigar and talking about it. I mean, I know when I go to the States, I go to the a shop in Minneapolis called golden leaf where I used to live by there. And uh, I'll meet up with some friends and we'll just walk in the humidor We'll pick the same stuff. Maybe there's a cigar they haven't tried that I've had that I really liked. We might pick that up, sit down, and talk to other people about it. And it's a it's a good way to sort of build that community because the one thing that could turn people off, I think, is if they go into the shop for the first time and they feel like an outsider and they feel like they mm -hmm. don't belong there. It could, it could turn them off forever. Yeah. And, you know, being able to educate someone about cigars um, is a great opportunity that you should not squander, obviously. You know, the 
if people are new to cigars and they come into the shop, you know, choose a cigar that you can talk about. It's made in this factory. It's made in this country. Uses these kinds of tobaccos. You know, I think it has this characteristics, spicy, sweet, salty, chocolatey, whatever. You know, what do you think? And, and ask their opinion and educate them that they're really, I, I don't know, there are some right and wrong answers in cigars. I think the impression of a cigar on your palate in terms of flavor and taste is very subjective, as, as Jorge was saying previously, and really listening to them. And if they have a different flavor profile, respecting that. I often find that people who aren't in cigar media or in the industry have a really great perspective on the flavors of the cigar because they don't have all those preconceived notions. You know, they can pick up a cigar that maybe you've been smoking for a long time and they're like, I get this. And they're like, wow, I never, I never got that. That's really great. And I think that's one of the great things about this industry and a great kind of path to go down with that person. Oh yeah, and there's nothing more debonair than to welcome someone in and sort of you're not because you're not just sharing the cigar, you're sharing your time, right. you're you know creating a friendship, and 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 I know for me like the friendships I made like with you and Will and learning about cigars and listening to you guys, um, it really opens it not just opens up your mind to other cigars, but then you connect with other people, and it really sort of brings out that whole social aspect to cigars that I think separates it from a lot of other activities and hobbies, I guess. It's that sort of communal atmosphere. Yeah, and it's really great to sit in a room with a bunch of people from all different walks of life and, and have that commonality uh, in cigars. Um, in terms of getting new people into cigars, though, I think that uh, Jorge brought up a great point, and we've touched on it on the show in the past, and that is giving them kind of a glimpse into the cigar industry how cigars are made, where cigars come from, you know, the, the, the different type of plants, the different types of components, the number of hands that touch that cigar before it lands inside of your retailer's humidor. You know, all those things are fascinating. It gives people a, a great appreciation for cigars, which I think is, is super, super important and uh, really enhances their experience when they're smoking a cigar. Oh, yeah, I think, I think you guys brought it up um, on a show a lot, well, long time ago, maybe, oh, maybe a year or so ago, uh, Stogie Sano was talking about it and comparing it to wine. And with wine, you know, you have all the tastes and the grapes and the years, and you really understand what goes behind that. And with cigars, it's the same thing. Like, if you could take a person through and talk and, and show them a cigar and talk to them about, like, the factory it comes from, all the different components. And they can learn about that. I mean, that it brings it to another level. It's not just another, you know, cigar in a shop. Like it, it has a sort of a life and a story on its on its own. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think um, you also need to be mindful of strength as well. Um, the worst experience for a new cigar smoker is if you give them a cigar that's too strong and it makes them feel queasy or sick and just totally overwhelms their palate. I think when you're developing your palate, you have to start out with a milder, medium-bodied cigar that's not high in strength. And I think that's, that's really super important. And I'm not saying that has to be a Connecticut, but it should be something that's somewhat mild. And you also have to take into account the person's background as well. Maybe they're a you know, cigarette smoker or pipe smoker or whatever. And then you have a little more freedom to, to move around the strength spectrum. But if it's someone that's like, oh, I've never really smoked a cigar before, I'm not, you know, they're really nicotine sensitive, be very mindful of that when you're helping them choose a cigar. Oh, yeah. I mean, because um, it's, it's sort of like, and that's a really great point, because it's like, it's about getting to know the person, you know, is the debonair aspect of it. Like, you're getting to know the person and finding something that connects I mean, you're not trying to buy, you know, you're not introducing yourself to cigars. So to just assume that, oh, I love this cigar, so you're going to love this cigar. Um, it's getting to know the person and trying to find something that fits and then, you know, talking them through it and really, you know, really understand where they're coming from and, and find something that works for them, um, I think is, is really important. 
No, I, I completely agree. Um, yeah, and I, I always welcome new smokers into the environment. I think just like you said, Dave, the, the social aspect of it, welcoming them, welcoming them in. Um, I mean, you don't want to step on the retailer's toes. A lot of times if the retailer is busy and they got a lot of stuff going on or, you know, you know the person, they're a friend. You know, I'm not shy about with the retailers I have a relationship with in, in helping that person in the humidor. Uh, and that really can help the, the social aspect as well. You know, I also think if you're a new smoker, just going into the various shops and talking to the retailers, most retailers I've experienced um, are really good about helping you find a cigar and being very welcoming and very open to, to new people in the industry. I think it's such a small percentage of people that smoke cigars that we as a culture are very welcoming to, to new smokers. No, I, I agree. I totally agree. I mean, you know, and, and it's that, I mean, and I've heard people say it too, like, you know, that first experience is so important if they feel turned off or they're not a part of it, that, that can really um, be very, have a very negative impact. So being, being open and welcoming in most places are, um, it's just going in and, and, and really sort of, you know, helping the person through it and being, being open to trying different cigars and talking to them and, if you know if it's people that even at your house or something, people are over, and they know you smoke cigars. I'm sure this has happened to you, Paul, as well. They come over and you're cooking out of something like, oh, I wouldn't mind having one. It's taking them through, showing them the humidor, showing this is what I got, you know, mm. talking them through it, finding one, um, and and really sort of, um, I guess, being open and being generous with not just your cigars, with your time as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think when people are over your house, Dave, you know, one of the things, too, is I try and find the right pairing as well with whatever they're drinking. And, you know, that's big in my house. You know, I have a pool and my family and friends come over a lot in the summertime. They like to have cigars outside. Um, and there's whatever the, the cocktail or beverage or spirit is, I try and pair the cigar with that. You know, my father-in-law, somewhat easy, right? He likes to drink scotch. So, you know, the pairings are pretty, are pretty obvious when it comes to scotch. Beer can be a lot more finicky. Um, wine, I don't know as, as well, but, you know, obviously there's a sharp contrast between your whites and your reds. So understand what people are drinking and try and, try and complement what they're drinking uh, as well. You know, it's really funny. Um, uh, I was talking to one of my neighbors uh, who's actually going to start helping us out here as an executive producer, and he's like... Uh, he has this Sam Adams Utopius. I don't know if you've ever heard of this beer, Dave. Um, it, Sam Adams is a brewery here uh, in, in New England, in, in Massachusetts, in Boston. has it, its roots here, so I was exposed to this brand a long time ago. And they make this really high alcohol content beer that drinks more like a whiskey or scotch or port. Like it's very... It's the most heaviest spirit I've ever had on the palate, right? And, you know, if that's what someone likes to drink, man, like you, that's going to be the toughest pairing in the world. Um, but you have to try and pair that cigar with it. And, and it's interesting. You can kind of tell who would be the cigar smoker. Um, and, you know, I was talking to, to, to Keith, this person at the beer, and he's like, you know, I tried pairing this thing with everything. He's like, I tried different fruits and cheeses and food and, and all this different stuff. And he's like, whatever I paired it with, nothing would work. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's probably not even something you want to pair with a cigar, dude. You know, <laughs> like it's, um, but if you can recognize someone that has that palate for wine and spirits and food, um, bring them in cigars can be a little easier, but make sure you make those appropriate uh, pairings. Maybe even suggest if they're having a beer, I mean, it's a lighter beer to pair a Connecticut with it. Great success with that as well. Pairings are yeah, still... Yeah, no, but... Go ahead, Dave. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I was just going to say, yeah, the pairings and, and things are, are really important. And also, um, I, th I, I think Vitola size is also important too. Like, you don't want, you know, someone that's just interested in cigars, you don't want to be like, oh, here's this, you know, 7 by 70 or something. <laughs> yeah, here's double it's, Corona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's too. I mean, too for you. I mean, for me, I try to keep in my humidor at home just sort of like a good, uh, a good variation of vitolas around. Not just for me, but also like if I have people coming over, you know, that want to 
you know, short of smoke or, or things yeah. like that. So you could even, I mean, you could even like the Nicaragua, the Davidoff Nicaragua, for example, which um, Jorge talked about. Like, you could have a Toro, but then like you could have the short Corona for somebody and be smoking the same blend, but it's still they still find it approachable. Yeah, I I keep shorter cigars around for people who who visit that I know uh, appreciate the shorter cigars. Um, my father-in-law really likes the shorter cigars. He tends to be pretty easy about, you know, which one. Because, like, you know, I said he drinks scotch, and they all pair pretty well with scotch. So usually a medium, medium full, shorter cigar, he's really happy. My sister likes to smoke cigars. You know, I give her something a little lighter. She'll often drink wine or beer um, when she comes over as well. So, you know, the lighter cigars I find tend to go better uh, with some of the lighter beers. If someone likes to drink a darker, heavier beer, then you can pair it with a, a little darker, heavier cigar. So there are some mysteries to pairings, but there are some general rules as well, and we've, we've covered those in previous segments. So um, that concludes, again, thank you, Dave, for the, the, the topic. I think, I think it was very timely with our interview with Jorge and, and very uh, relevant to our debonair ideal segment. So that concludes this segment. Coming up next, we're going to talk about our Stogies of the Week. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 